Welcome back, everyone, to the Halo Master Chief Collection Launch Invitational presented by ESL. Golden Boy and Bravo here as we're going to be calling the action for STK facing off against VWS Gaming. Super pumped about this matchup. It's going to be a good one, Bravo. Uh, I mean, you know, again, just when we had the first matchup of the day, which was the Agency versus Optic Gaming, we knew we were in for a treat. Definitely saw some good stuff there from Believe the Hype in their matchup against Purple Rain. But now this is where we're going to get into the meat of this tournament here with these uh, next two matches coming up. Yeah, these next two matches, match three and match four, are going to be pretty big and, of course, determine the lower half of that winner's bracket. Uh, excited to see, of course, this match, though. I think I'm, I'm most excited about out of the two about this match. Like you said, uh, VWS, a team that came off of our uh, second place at the last tournament, so you can, be, you can bet that they're coming here trying to win, right? Uh, but right. SDK has a lot to prove, right? They brought back a team name uh, from over the more than 10 years ago, oh, right? Yeah, man. Uh, cool. A team that is legendary, STK, with a lot of tournament wins and success back in the Halo 1 days. So, so to bring back that team name, Ogre 2 must be pretty confident. Of course, Ogre 2, the team, ca excuse me, Heinz, the team captain there, and he has selected Ogre 2, Snakebite, and Royal 2 uh, to go with him into battle. Yeah, when the announcement was made, uh, I thought it was actually pretty funny that you, you actually noted it. You were like, you know, people are going to notice that Ogre 2 is not here. And there's a reason for that, because he's already been chosen. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. You had to highlight that right away. I did, yeah. I mean, Ogre 2, of course, one of the most legendary players in the history of competitive Halo. And uh, Heinz right away picked him up. This team was actually a team that was announced a while ago, uh, kind of officially, as the team that they would be competing with in the Master Chief Collection and Halo 2 anniversary. So, of course, excited to have them here. Uh, but it's not going to be an easy match for them against VWS, who is now looking to um, turn that second place of the last tournament into a first place here at the Launch Invitational. Oh, yeah. VWS Gaming, uh, you know, you mentioned. It, right, they came. They were the runner-up at Pax Prime. Came up short there, but there you can see the boys. Nade, legit, goofy, Mickwin, obviously out for blood, and they want to get right back to that uh, to that uh, grand finals. And at the same time, you know, take it a step further. You know, take it home, take it all the way for the VWS organization. Um, but uh, it's going to be tough, man. SDK definitely has a lot of uh, a lot of you know slaying prowess a lot of talent yep. on that squad this is going to be an intense matchup and of course guys just to give you the rundown we're going to be kicking off game one if in case you guys don't know will be five flag ctf multi-flag ctf game two will be team slayer on lockdown and if necessary game three will be king of the hill on warlord so uh again you know we have uh we we saw how the hc and optic gaming played uh, you know, the first matchup uh, on CTF was really all about holding those side positions here. And I'm assuming we're going to see the same thing again. But if you had to tip your hat in the favor of one team over the another or over the other in this mat or in this game type, who would it be and why? You know, I think in Five Flag CTF on Warlord, I really need to give it to VWS here, and there's a few reasons why I say that. Uh, from left to right here, you're looking at uh, Goofy on your screen right here, as well as joined by Nated in that middle chair. He is the team captain. Uh, legit and Mikwin down on the far end. This roster, I think, as I said, they not only can they play this match very quickly, can they play with the speed that you need to win a Warlock flag game, but also, you know, this is a roster that's been together since the past event, right? They, they've played mm -hmm. Halo 2 Anniversary before, and they're ready to go, and they're ready to go here at this tournament. Uh, you know, SDK, I have a lot of confidence in that roster. I think they're very strong, and I think they can make some noise in this tournament, but specifically on Game 1, I'm expecting VD VWS to come out of the gate and put themselves in a good position to win that trophy right there. Yeah, I, I wouldn't uh, disagree with you, man. I, you know, I, again, dropping back to the community and what everyone's been saying, you know, there was a lot of talk of it being a VW, or excuse me, an Optic Gaming SDK final, yeah. right? And uh, I felt like so many people were just selling short VWS. You know, they have all the capability, right? They proved it at PAX. It was just, you know, Optic Gaming or EX at that time, they were just playing at, uh, at another level. Right um, now, I, I feel like VWS and, and been again watching a lot of the streams and seeing these guys play. And you know, they definitely feel a lot more confident uh, coming into this one. Uh, but then, you know, when you when you think about STK though, and how they've also been, uh, you know, kind of prepping for this and the confidence that they have to form this team a while ago, uh, you know, for Halo: The Master Chief Collection, definitely kind of shows the you know how they're how they're looking at each other as a team, yeah. right? And and. SDK, while VWS could potentially thrive in this one, I could easily see SDK taking that Team Slayer lockdown. Hey, I hey. mean, if, if VWS isn't careful. Oh, certainly. I mean, VWS needs to uh, take this team very seriously. One thing I'm very curious to see, VWS, a roster, historically, very intense team, right? Once you get Nate and Goofy talking, they will not stop talking. Their communication uh, is quite good, and it suits their play style very well. I'm curious what we're going to see 
on the STK side though, right? In, in terms of intensity and in their communication, we'll see if they can hold it together and, and put up a fight against this VWS team. Yeah, it's gonna be a good one, guys. The map is being loaded right now. We are about to get this one going. VWS versus STK. Winner will move on to face against the winner of Straight Rippin' and TCM Gaming. That matchup's gonna be coming up next. But those guys definitely ready to go. The confidence is there for everyone. Looking for legit to go huge as well. I haven't really spoken a lot about right. him. And uh, I, I think he's another player who could just show up at any point in time. This is going to be an epic matchup. Oh, it's going to be good. I mean, that's a great point. Legit and Nated together, of course, players who have been playing together uh, for a very long time since their Halo 2 days. And they're back, of course, on the 10-year anniversary playing again. Uh, so we'll see if they're able to do it in this match. And we're ready to kick off the action right now. We're starting off with Ogre 2 on STK. We're here with Multiflag CTF on Warlord. You're watching match three of Winner's Bracket Round 1, STK facing off against VWS. Ogre 2 now, uh, obviously, one of the greatest to play the game here. I had to kick it off with him because I wanted to see what he was going to be bringing to the table at the beginning. Now he's going to be looking around the middle of the map here as uh, there is going to be some pressure. Oh, wait a minute. Ogre 2 going to have to drop back just a little bit here. But there is going to be some pressure coming over from that uh, from that red side. Let's go ahead and jump over to Royal 2 now who has uh, some good a good vantage point on Goofy. He's oh. looking to get that solid four. That's going to be a killing spree as a matter of fact for Royal 2 as he finally gets taken out. Yeah, he gets that touch as well. Doesn't look like Heinz is in a position to jump top mid to run that flag, though, so that might be a dead flag. We'll see if they're able to get a, a grip on that. Now, Heinz trying to move there. He does have three seconds. Two, I might be one. wrong, and he's going to get that touch. Amazing Big. timing there. Heinz gets that to his plat right now. We'll see if now anyone is in position to continue to run that flag. Yeah, it seems like Royal 2 could be. That's going to be a double kill, though. Royal 2 oh, looking to put goodness. this flag in. STK, can they do it? Yes, they do. And that's going to make it 1-0. to zero. STK taking the lead. Yeah, right there now picking up this shot. Ooh, Goofy with nice shots on Royal to we'll take him out. We'll go ahead and now switch over to the VWS side. We'll see what Nated is up to off of the respawn. Now portaling through, they're down to an early deficit. And like we said, if VWS does not really take this match seriously, no, they could fall down pretty quickly. Ogre 2 with another flag full beat. Uh, VWS now getting challenged from top mid. Now Nated playing the portal game and trying to stay alive. He does get taken out though. Yeah, there's not much he could have done there as we switch over to Goofy now, who is uh, looking to actually defend that flag. And he is going to get that return. So that's going to be huge. But there's going to be a player inside the blue base though. Oh. And that's going to be Goofy for the stop hitting him with the melee, and that will pretty much stop any run that they could have had inside of the blue base for the red team, but still, 1-0. to zero. That is a glaring number there to see so early into this matchup, Bravo. Yeah, I gotta say, one thing I just saw from Ogre 2 that I loved, he was weak in that vent when Goofy lifted up. Still managed to Ooh. get the melee on Goofy. That's a huge play. Could be a sign of things to come from Ogre 2. Yeah, and that flag's gonna get thrown around to the left side here. Mikwin's actually gonna be uh, near the vicinity to potentially make something happen, but that could just be a throwaway flag, and uh, there's going to be Heinz there around the oh, corner with the, the Sentinel, Sentinel beam. beam. That's the first I think we've seen it so far. Uh, trying to do some damage to that thing, of course. That can melt the shields of your opponent pretty quickly. He did try to use that potentially uh, team it with a melee attack right now. Heinz tosses that flag out. Looks like Mikwin going back and forth between the BR and the Sentinel beam and trying to stay alive on his own base right here. Oh, but Mikwin is going to get picked off before he can even use that Sentinel beam. Now Legit, though, is on the prowl in the top, but we got to switch over to Ogre 2 to see what's going on with him because Ogre 2 actually finding two players up top. Goop is going to get picked as Ogre 2 will drop back and <laughs> he just <laughs> shoots Snake by who is coming through the portal at the same time. He uh, made it so he couldn't actually pour it through now. Might try to lift up here. It might just use also use the nade jump. Lifts up through the vent. Now challenging him. Looks like a player is waiting for him here on the enemy flag. Picks up that kill on Legit. A nice job to clear the path for a potential flag run. Yeah, Ogre 2 is going to drop that flag down and he's a... Uh, oh, there is going to be a player right behind him though. It's going to be Mikwin, oh but my. Ogre 2 able to overcome that one. And Goofy that was huge there. Flag is going to be around six seconds before it will return back to the base. Goofy over by top yellow platform as he's going to have to abandon that one. The flag goes right back. Naden, though, has that flag in hand. He will get taken out. Flag's going to be down presently, but Ogre 2 is just running around this map, and he's having his way with this VWS team. Yep, right now that flag do, does reset, so both flags back at home. Ogre 2 trying to figure out. Looks like a lack of communication there, trying to figure out what's going on back home. I'd love to see what's going on with the VWS roster. We haven't gotten to take a look too much at Maquin just yet. He does get taken out, but we'll go ahead and see what Goofy's done. Looks like four players oh, down, four actually. Down. We tried to show the VWS roster, but all all four were dead. Nated is the first player up, and that flag is being ran by Camo. VWS in a tough spot. That flag is now being ran in. We'll see if anyone on the uh, SDK side is in position to run it in. It looks like Snakebite is going to be that player. Now going to grab it right off the spawn and go ahead and grab that. Now they go up 2-0. to zero. 
Just STK with a great lead here over VWS just a few minutes into the match. You you could just tell the control that STK has in this game, Bravo. The VWS has not been able to set up properly, and they every time it seems like they go for a push, they don't have that guy that's going to be there for the support to be able to you know get a couple stops, you know, cut off a couple of the routes some of these guys are going to be taking here. So now the flag is going to be down yet again. STK looking to make this one happen. Goofy's going to be right in front of him, and that's going to be seven seconds left before it returns. But they have players around there, so they should be able to get that flag or at the very least uh, touch it. And no, they're actually going to let that one uh, drop back. So, uh, and why? Why is that? Is that just because they knew that they just did not have position? Right. Yeah. Especially with a 2-0 lead, Golden Boy. Sometimes you don't want to risk that map control because on a map like Warlord, it's actually possible for the enemy team, should you lose map control, to do back-to-back -back captures. If they kill you and then kill you one more time off of the respawn, it can mean bad things. So generally, when you have that two-point cushion, all you want to do is maintain map control and keep that a priority. Yeah, well, let's uh, see what's up with Nate as he's going to be at a quarter shields now. Nate's flying in all over the place, waiting to see if he can get that, and he has to get this flag, and he does manage to do so. So he's going to have a full shield, running to this one, taking shots to almost there. Now he's going to have no shields as he gets picked off, and the flag Ooh. is going to be returned here. That is unfortunate for VWS. That is a very big return there uh, from the STK side, and actually Royal 2 is now in position to run this flag, trying to stay al alive in the vent. He has tossed the flag out towards the enemy's vent portal. We'll see if if he can try to continue this run, it looks like even strength for oh, both teams. Three. Finds three players there, no chance for him as he gets taken out. And a nice rally back by VWS to put on the pressure, making sure a third flag capture doesn't happen. I got to talk about Ogre too, though. He has camo and he has the flag. And you mentioned it before, camo being so important on Warlord. So he's going to continue to put some shots down. But look at the pressure, though, is uh, he's actually going to have to drop back from this one. Camo definitely going to play to his advantage. And look at that. He can continue to toss that flag out, Golden Boy. As we talked about earlier, being a pain in the neck in the enemy's base and continuing to toss the flag out in each direction constantly makes them turn back towards their base. They cannot go on the offensive when you have a player like Ogre, Ogre 2 doing that. And with the two-kill cushion, he can ha he has that luxury to kind of just keep being a pain in the neck in the enemy's base. Yeah, and it's it's very agitating, right, as a player when you see that flag go down and, and in your head you just like, come on, right? And and you know, like, at that point, you just have no control. You have no control if you're allowing the other team to just get into the base so easily and no one's able to call that one out. But Nate, though, with that flag, he's actually going to get the jump and this is going to be a cap. And yeah, it's going to be two to one as VWS will be able to answer back here, but they're still going to be down by one. And they have plenty of time to work with. Yeah, right now only down by only down two to one. So uh, if we actually look at the clock, looks like just over eight minutes left uh, before we'd hit. Uh, that sudden death mark, of course, at the 15-minute mark, if one team is leading, the game will end. At the bottom right of your screen, you can take a look at the game timer, currently listing 23.02. That's your indicator, and that lets you know how much time is actually left in the match. And right now, finds a camo player. Might take him out. Oh, Ooh. my goodness, and Naden punishing Hines, trying to lift up with that camo. As I said, Golden Boy, when you have the camo, you need to put it to use. You need to maximize its potential, and any time you waste it, you know, that could change the result of the game. Yeah, Naden's taking a lot of fire, though, from the side, as he's going to have to abandon that position sending nades out as he looks over across on top green platform and seeing what's going on here with uh with, who is this with Hines Hines for the SDK team no he's gonna get picked off jumping back over to Mick when he gets taken out and I'm gonna stay with VWS here just because I want to see what they're gonna be doing they're, they have, they're on the hot seat right now Bravo they're down two to one they have time to work with here but they have to make moves and they have to establish that control early on right and here's legit a legendary Halo 2 pro he's returned for Halo 2 anniversary we'll see if he can help his team rally back Ooh. that flag is out but he does get taken out. That's okay. Goofy is in a position to continue the run. He this has a little big. bit of help from Nate and he might try to lift up here. Tosses the flag up into the flag. That puts it in, in the flag area. Nate is about to cap and Nate does land the cap and they tie it 2-2. Two 21.57 two, left on the clock. Amazing stuff there from Goofy. He tossed the flag up into the flag area. Put it in the perfect place for Nate who runs it in. That's a classic Warlock move. That was such a great play there and you can tell that communication between the two teams. That's exactly what you wanted to see if you are a VWS fan. So legit taking some fires. He's going to jump back, but Goofy, we're going to stick with him because he has been a playmaker here in this matchup. Finding over two across map, and he's taking fire from behind as he's going to be at about a quarter shield and will get cleaned up yep. by Hines. STK now running that third flag. We'll see Snake by top and we'll see if he can get that across the map right now. Tossing perfectly, landing no on the shields. button. He finally does get taken out. Is anyone on STK in position to touch this? And it's Hines. We'll see if he can grab it. He has camo. Does not get the touch, though. Looks like Royal 2 now will switch over oh to him. Goodness. And he gets taken out. That was, oh for a moment, four players 
players down for STK. Of course, now Naded running that flag. He gets the return. Now Naded running this flag. This is what we saw last game. And that flag actually drops. Unfortunately, Naded accidentally drops bottom middle. That's going to put a lot of pressure on and make it a lot more difficult to run this flag. Yeah, and there goes the Sentinel oh. beam. <laughs> that is awesome as Ogre 2 is going to be the victim there. Naded is going to be able to pick up this flag. Oh, and he's he uses forward. the flat route. That's an interesting choice. Right get taken out here. Oh. That flag is going to stay. Let's see if it actually skipped all the way across. Is there anyone in position on the VWS side? And yes, it might be Legit, who's now waltzing his way to the flag. No. He gets taken out, and it looks like now Miquin is the last hope if you want to switch over to that first grade. He gets taken out, though, right now. No, excuse me, returned. but that flag is returned, and he gets taken out. Now on the other side, STK in a position to counter cap. This is insane because, you know, VWS put all their, you know, put all their marbles into that one, and it was just unfortunate for them that they were not able to capitalize on it. So looking around to see what's going on. We're going to stick with VWS here to see what they can do. Of course, uh, two to two right now. Definitely not what STK, you know, had in mind because they had some great control at the beginning of the game. Oh. Big window. Can't quite. Oh, that was oh. actually a trade. Yeah, nice trade there. Both players landing perfect four shots to eliminate one another. That shows you the skill level that we had here at the launch invitational. Staying on board with Nick off the respawn. We'll see if he can get his team a lead here. As you said, Alex, they were down 2-0 to zero at the start of the match. They quickly rallied back and brought it back to an even playing field. That's right. So looking here to see what's up with Naded. He's putting some long-range shots into World 2, who legit oh, managed man. to pick up. That's going to be a kill on Ogre 2 again. And pre-nading those, uh, you know, those, those teleporters there. Snake bite. He tried to challenge. That's going to be a headshot for Naded. And they're just continuing to push forward here. It seems like this could be the run for them. Naded, if he gets this kill, this will be huge from having to back up. World 2, you know, smartly enough, able to stay alive. Those nades flying in, jumping all over the place. Naded will get picked off as there's going to be, uh, I believe, two down right now presently for VWS. Yeah, right now, let's go ahead and see what Hines is up to on the STK side as he picks up one kill, trying to stay alive, trying to get his team back in a position to get their lead back. Uh, you know, they had a really strong start here. And what I was worried about, you know, if, if you are STK, is you need to maintain the pressure throughout the match, right? You can't let up. You cannot let the BWS roster get back into this right now. As Nated trying to lead a flag run across the map, he's stopped right now. Nice route there to stay alive in the vent area. Going to try, Ooh. but he finally does get taken out. And it looks like no one on BWS in a position to continue that run. So it might be safe for STK to continue to just look for map control rather than get the return. Yeah, we'll stick with Nated off the respawn what? to see what he's going to do. Uh, of course, both flags are going to be on the uh, you know respective side of the bases here. Time's going to be dwindling down in regular. Play Nated oh. though. He uh, actually saw one of the players there. And again, just absolutely demolished with grenades. And Nated just continuing to look around. But oh, look at this though, the pressure coming from oh, the teleporter. Unfortunately, yeah, it gets pitched there. Just bad timing there, unfortunately, for Three Nated down. as he pushed out. And we'll go ahead and see what Snake Bites up to. We haven't spent a lot of time on his POV. Want to see how he's anchoring his team here. As I said, Royal 2 and Snake Bite, my two X Factors here. They have the potential to take this team very far in the tournament if they are on fire. Finding players at the green base while he tosses it to yellow. A nice play there. Might try to run this, but it is down near the vent. Not in the best position to try to run it uh, as he sees Goopy across the map right now. Picking up another Ooh. kill and looks like still hesitant to run this, but it looks like they're actually waiting because Royal 2 has the camo. And now Hines running this flag back. If you want to switch over to Hines, he's about to bring this flag in right now. And that's going to be 3-2. to two. SDK takes the lead with just a little bit left in the match, putting the pressure on VWS. That flag was grabbed and just ran right into the teleporter as yep. soon as possible. Smart play out of Hines there as we stick with him. And now that flag is going to get thrown down. They're hoping to see if they can cause a little bit of a distraction, a little bit of a ruckus inside of the red base. One player there for the blue team. That's going to be Goofy. Flag is going to be picked up, but Legit is going to be able to. Oh, yes, he my. gets the kill there on Hines. Ever so close, though, as Legit Oh, my goodness. A switch over. Hit. He hit that back by that perfect assassination. This is nice huge. Oh, my goodness. Might be able to cap your VWS. He's taken out. We'll see if anyone's in position. Wow. And no one will get returned right there. VWS almost making an incredible play as Legit gets the sneaky portal back whack with the flag, but just a second away from capping. Score stays at 3-2 to two in favor of SDK. Two minutes left on the clock here for VWS. If they are not able to do this, SDK will win it in regulation play. Over two long range, legit going for the challenge. And he's actually going to get the assist there. Now you can see once again that pressure oh. is going to be on. That's going to be two down right now for here SDK. We go. This oh, is going to be huge. It doesn't matter. Legit missed that jump, but they clean up the third kill. Now three down on the SDK side. They're in position to run this flag and potentially tie the game. Woo. Only a minute and a half left for them to do so before we'd hit that sudden death mark. This is a pressure-filled situation. Flag oh, is going to be in the hands, I believe, of Goofy. No, of Mikwin. I stand corrected. Mikwin uh, oh, trying to see. Oh, that flag is down. We'll see. Oh, no. Can't that's return. a big return from over two. Legit was doing an Ooh. incredible job holding down his side of the map. However, the rest of the VWS roster was unable to do so. That flag returns now. We have just over a minute left in
in regulation. That's right. World 2 able to take out Naded and uh, Naded off the respawn. You know, the, these guys know that the pressure's clock for them to be able to do anything here. And we saw this happen actually before, I, I believe, when Opti Gaming uh, was able to cap that flag. But then it, it ended up occurring that, you know, the agency were able to capitalize right away. So let's see if this is uh, actually going to be the case. Goofy's going to be the player to watch here as he is going to have the flag presently. Oh, no. He didn't quite know which way to go. That might have cost him an extra second. Going to try to jump oh, up. My but that flag is down. Looks like we'll see if anyone is able to run it. Another player gets taken down. Miquin now with the flag. He tries to toss the flag up. We'll see if anyone can do it now. Naded is in a spot to run the flag. And Naded able to cap that. They tie it up. With only 30 seconds left, we are tied at three. VWS able to secure that flag, but that flag is now being ran by Legit again. Somehow, Legit was ready to run that flag again now, and he's at green base. We'll see if they can turn this. That'd be an amazing double cap if they did, Golden Boy. Yeah, that would be nuts, but those names are going to be flying in in green. Hines is actually going to go for the challenge here, and oh, Hines no. will win that battle against Naded. That was big. Hines winning that battle, trading with that player was very important. He does have help for Miquin, though. They're going to try to run this flag in. We'll see if they can do so. Right now, Legit is alone. We'll see if he can run this flag up. Oh. Somehow staying alive, manages to jump up no. to the platform, avoiding the grenades no. that he has help here. Oh. Finally he gets taken out, and now we'll see if anyone on VWS is able to run it, but I think that flag actually has returned on both sides. Yes, both flags are back, Golden Boy. VWS almost pulling off an insane double capture to win the game. However, both flags now back at home as these teams will reset. This is, again, I knew that this was going to happen. These two teams are hungry for a victory here, especially with VWS at PAX Prime. Legit, though, unfortunately, is going to get meleeed and switching over to Ogre 2, who's actually low on shield. So, we, you know, we may see if he tries to stay alive here, but if there's one person who can, it is Ogre 2. And look at that, back to full shields, that, right? looking for the challenge again, finding one. Is he oh. going to do it? No, he's he going to get back, back whack from behind there. That's going to be unfortunate for him, jumping over to Snakebite. Yeah, Snakebite right now with full shields, holding down one of the side bases. Catches Mikwin off guard. Love that play. Picks up that clean four-shot kill. That's right. Going to try to get man advantage here if he can. And those nades are nades. coming into the vent. Needs to stay alive to be an anchor on this side of the map. As I've been saying earlier in the tournament, it's so important that you hold down those side bases. Those are essentially That's a secondary right. objective alongside the flag. You want to hold those side bases. Once you do so, you can really lock down map control. Yeah, so look for Snakebite to try and get control there yet again. Legit though, off uh, you know, actually getting picked off or getting a couple shots into him from Snakebite. Off the respawn there, and that nose nade just flying oh, in all over the place. There's just nothing he could have done there as we switch over to Ogre 2. He Apologies. gets taken out. He gets picked. Royal 2 gets picked. That's going to be three down right now as Legit is going to have the flag. But no, he's going to get picked off. But his teammate's going to be there. And who has the flag right now? No one is actually just sitting there. That's right. That flag is just happens to be down next to the portal. However, no one on the VWS roster in a position to run that just yet. And we'll see if they can do it. But also, SCK now pulling the flag as well. Ogre 2 moving the flag across the map. We'll see if he can stay alive. Nade's flying in. He stays alive somehow in the grenade area. Oh my goodness, and it gets the stick right there. And he gets taken out, but we'll see now what Royal 2 is up to with that flag still out. Now both flags have reset once again back at home. Ladies and gentlemen, we told you Warlord's flag is a fast game type, and right here we're just barely trying to keep up with these two yeah, teams. Yeah, I mean, you know, like we have this awesome switching system of us just trying to get the different perspectives, and it's just been absolute carnage in this matchup. Royal 2 dealing with a lot, though, as Naded, on the other hand, he's actually looking to make some noise here over by uh, Tom Red. And uh, what's going on on your side, Bravo? What do you see presently? Looks like Naded finally getting taken out. We'll see that flag. Both flags once again back at home, so Golden Boy almost four times in a row just now. We saw both flags pulled right and both flags are able to both teams are able to get returns now The reason that's happening is neither team has been able to Ooh. lock down map control once a team does that They'll be able to do things like grab top middle control grab the camo grab the side bases However, these two teams speak of the devil goofy now grabbing that camo and this might be what VWS needs He needs to make sure he doesn't die here. It's so important. He stays alive with the camo Oh, but he's gonna get picked off top mid and you know I do want to commend though VWS for the help that goofy was getting but still just you know and, and again It wasn't really even even uh, his teammates fault. Goofy just put himself in a position where he exposed himself to the base. Goofy, though, uh, off the respawn, is going to find a player near that teleporter. And uh, let's just see if Goofy is going to stay up here because, you know, he's he knows that there's pressure. No, he is going to get picked. And alternatively, on the other side, Snakebite's turn to be featured on stream. Let's see what he's going to do here. Yeah, Snakebite getting pinched right here. A nice cross mapping there from the VWS side, making sure Snakebite is not a threat in the side base. They know how important it is to lock down that area right now, trying to neutralize that threat. Looks like one player does drop, so the pressure is on SCK, but Snakebite answers back with a nice kill on the Jit who is dropping down. Also challenges Goofy, has help, cleans up that kill as well, and they're in good position to potentially grab map control here. 
Yep, and uh, Snake Bite looking around, and he, again, you mentioned he side bases yep. all the time. This is uh, basically what, where you want to be. My goodness, amazing shot Look Snake how Bite. many shots he's laying down, all the angles that he can hit, staying alive against Nated right there, engaging three separate players. I love what I'm seeing from Snake Bite. What we need now from SDK is Royal 2, who's in the base right now, to get that flagpole. That player, actually, that Snake Bite was tagging has, uh, you know, has to have an inclination that there's going to be pressure coming from behind, right. and they do. And so they're able to stop at least one, but World 2 is still going to be hanging outside of the base. Now it's going to be Snakebite pushing up alongside of him as the flag has been right pulled. Now, what Snakebite is doing is actually blocking the respawn right now. He's making sure no enemy team is spawning in the area where they're running the flag. You want to force the enemy respawn on the other side of the map, and that's what they've done. They might be able to bring this home. Yeah, now who has the flag presently? It's, it seems it's, like, uh, like World 2. It's going to be World 2 with the flag. This could be it as, uh, as the, the flag is going to be pulled in. in. Yeah. That's going to do it as STK will take it 4-3. to three here in game number one. And I gotta say, amazing discipline from Snake right there. Just uh, really nice stuff. As you saw him holding that side base, it looks like Royal 2 was not gonna be able to get a flagpole, right? Yeah. But he was patient. He waited inside green base, made sure he locked down that area. Then when you saw Royal 2 run that flag through the green area. They forced the respawn yellow. That's textbook Warlord flag. Brilliant stuff there. And now VWS has, uh, you know, a lot in front of him with lockdown, but I definitely do think that VWS could come out on top in this lockdown matchup strictly because you get that sniper, you know, in Nated's hands, even Legit's hands, I mean, they can cause a lot of problems. Uh, right. Or, excuse me, not Legit, but, you know, just just causing problems in general is what uh, I'm looking for Legit to do, um, as well as Goofy. Uh, that's kind of been uh, what we saw from them at, at, you know, at PAX Prime. Nated has to slay his heart away. Yep. On the other side, though, you know, you got, uh, you got SDK, that they're feeling great after that one because Snakebite, and you mentioned it, you said Snakebite World 2 are going to be your guys to take note of. And yep. Snakebite definitely proved that there. He was, again, you mentioned, you said the word discipline. That's very true. He hung out right by the side base. He was just putting shots down on nearly everyone, and uh, it, just, it was showing there, and that's why STK were, were able to take this one. Just yeah. brilliantly played. Brilliantly I, I love what played. I saw there. I, once again, it was also kind of a very similar match that we saw from the first game, right? Yeah. We saw a rally back at the last second VWS is able to cap. However, if a team is able to cap in those last seconds, right, it's generally an indicator that, you know, the pressure was on on their side. They did not yeah. have map control, and that's exactly what we saw. And uh, STK able to keep their composure. Uh, they play a few minutes into overtime, and they lock down that last flag. That's right. Definitely was a great game, guys. Now game two coming up next. It's going to be locked down. Team Slayer. Will Nated and the crew be able to answer back, or will STK close this out with 2-0? Find out after the break. Our duty as soldiers is to protect humanity, whatever the cost. We're going in. Get tactical, Marines! Welcome back, everyone, as it is time for game number two. Very excited about this one, of course. We want to give a big shout-out 
to Astro Gaming, who's been a huge supporter and, and uh, honestly has been, uh, you know, the go-to headset for Halo players everywhere. So a uh, big thank you to Astro Gaming for, of course, supporting what we're doing here. And it's uh, going to be some exciting times for them ahead. You know, this beautiful uh, A50 wireless, you know, Master Chief, uh, you know, headset definitely is uh, something to be admired here. So big thank you to them once again. Yeah, I mean, it's awesome to announce a multi-year partnership with Astro Gaming earlier this year. As you alluded to, Astro and Competitive Halo have been hand in hand really yep. since the inception of Astro products, right? I mean, uh, with with Competitive Halo players embracing, um, you know, the headset uh, almost immediately, and, yeah. and that hasn't changed to this day. And now that we finally have a formal partnership, uh, it's, it's pretty awesome to have them supporting the launch invitational here today. Yeah, that's right. So, uh, of course, a big thank you to them once again. You can follow them on Twitter, I believe, at Astro Gaming, and uh, you know they're very, very social on there. So make sure to give them some love. Uh, but yeah, now let's uh, talk about this matchup because uh, you know you have. SDK coming up big in that matchup, I mean, which is absolute pandemonium in that Warlord yeah, in I mean, that Warlord CTF game. As you as we kind of talked about during the match, it was almost impossible to keep up with on our end just because we had flags being pulled every second and almost as fast as they were being pulled, they were being reset and you had VWS ready to pull a flag immediately, right? Almost double capping uh, in the, the first few seconds of OT right there with amazing legit play, which is something you really can do on Warlord flag and we haven't seen that just yet. It's yeah. worth noting that if you do overextend yourself as a team and try to stop a flag cap, the enemy team can already be setting up on your flag and ready to run another flag. Flag, right? So you yeah. could see teams actually running flags back to back to back if they have the timing and the setup right. So we'll look for that later in the tournament. But of course, that's going to become rarer and rarer as the tournament goes on and the level of competition uh, increases. Yep, that's right. Uh, you know, of course, uh SDK and VWS looking to uh, put on quite the show on Team Slayer Lockdown. We're hoping to get this one started in just a little bit. Uh, you know, I want to kind of touch base on this again. You had mentioned uh, Snakebite and World 2. There you can see those two gentlemen at the uh, far end there uh, in their booth. Uh, of course, being coached by NASA himself, uh, Diesel, who is a, one, of the, one of the best coaches in the game. Um, I have to say, you know, they definitely came out and really just showed uh, why they were, you know, quality pickups for SDK. Oh, yeah. And I mean, great compliments for Ogre 2 and Heinz. Yeah, for anyone who's wondering, you know, the, the selection there with Heinz and Ogre 2 teaming with newer players, right? Heinz uh, making a name for, self, for himself and towards the end of Halo 2 and, and especially into Halo 3. Uh, Ogre 2, of course, a legendary Halo player who's been on top since day one uh, with Halo Combat Evolved. But Snakebite and Royal 2, comparatively, Right, uh, much newer players to the scene. Yeah. Uh, so players might have quite uh, any fans who might have questioned that I think might be understanding now why that was done. Snakebite, uh, not a player who's well known for his Halo 2 skill, but I think he's proved us all wrong here. Uh, showing that discipline he did on that match, yeah. not something you'd see from an amateur player, right? That's a veteran move to be able to know exactly what to do and not just playing Halo well, but playing exactly as you need to, depending on the map and the spawns that exist on the map. So great play all around from those two. I'm expecting to see them continue that momentum through the tournament. Yeah, it's uh, going to be very awesome to see how, uh, you know, SDK can keep this run going. But on the other side, VWS, they know that they have, you know, well, one, their back's against the wall because if they lose this one, they're going to be sent to the loser's bracket. But, you know, I, I think, again, I, I kind of want to just, you know, talk about Naded here, right? I, I He's the guy that needs to go off for this team. Um, you know, of course, uh, you can't forget about can't forget about legit. I mean, the native legit combo definitely, uh, you know, one of the one of the better ones and ones I definitely love watching. Um, what do you feel will will it be for VWS here? Like, wh what's what's going to be this X factor? Uh, where do you see each player kind of fitting in their role? Yeah, I think I mean, legit and native really need to be the vocal captains of this team. I think. Uh, Goofy and Mick when two players who are, are able to really break into enemy bases, break setups, play strategically. But what I need to see is the intensity from, from Nader and Legit, right? They're veteran players, as we said, uh, you know, a lot of success in Halo 2 and beyond. And I want to see them take charge of this team and r help them rally back in this game two on TS Lockdown. Now, uh, Slayers, of course, can certainly go either way, but we've seen Goofy uh, in the past as a player who can really make some noise, but, you know, back with his Darkest Hour squad in Halo 3. And yeah. he can certainly go off off with the sniper as well as uh, so can Naden and Mikwin if necessary. So yeah. I, I think what we really need to see is consistent play from them all around, but I also want to see a little bit better teamwork from them. Yeah, it's actually uh, pretty good for VWS to know that you know they have three guys who can pick up the snipe yeah. and you know do work with it, right? Um, that's going to be very very important because oftentimes you see that emphasis on like this one guy should probably be going after it, right? But they they have a very versatile squad and and, and I like that quite a bit. Um, 
So I guess moving into lockdown team Slayer, I mean, knowing what we know about these two teams, how, you know, who do you think has the upper hand here? I, I think with lockdown Slayer, I'm expecting to see SDK still have the upper hand. I think you know they're they have the momentum from that first match, and yeah. they also have uh, I think a little bit more composure. What we saw during that match, especially I, I can't talk about it enough uh, the teamwork that we saw towards the end of that match. When you're in a sudden yeah. death CTF match, right? This, these are best of three series. Every single game is a big deal. When you're in a sudden death scenario like that, and you're able to play with uh, that composure and, and uh, that team composition strategically, when I actually what I mean by that is actually where you are in the map. When you're able to hold that down against the yeah. team, you know who's fighting back with everything they've got. I think that's going to go a long way in lockdown team Slayer. Yep, yeah, that's right. Just want to give you guys an update uh, in. The losers bracket. Optic Gaming is presently one up on, uh, or one to zero uh, up on uh, Purple Rain. So, of course, we'll continue to keep track of that stuff as things go along. You know, these two teams. Uh, you know, one of them, one of them is going to go to losers bracket, and it's going to be tough because Optic Gaming. You know, they're out for blood. They want to make sure that they're just that they're settling their scores and they're they're moving on. Right. Yeah. We've it's definitely got good. some good matches coming up in the losers bracket, and I think you know, it, not only do you want to win this match if you are VWS and STK to advance in the winners bracket. But you do not want to find uh, Optic Gaming in the loser's bracket, right? Typically, drop into the loser's bracket will give you a, you know, a certain road. But actually, drop into the loser's bracket in this tournament now, needing to play against Optic Gaming would be quite a challenge if you had to play against them in, in loser's bracket round two. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So we're waiting for these guys to get in here, get ready to go, and, uh, you know, get this lockdown Team Slayer game going. Now, if need be, if uh, VWS is able to uh, win, they will uh, play King of the Hill, on Warlord, right. so that's uh, that's going to be another good one there to see. Uh, and you had mentioned before the discipline the STK has. That's certainly going to come into play there. We saw that with the agency in their right. matchup against Optic Gaming. And, uh, you know, of course, uh, STK uh, definitely matching up really well here. If you think about that agency STK matchup that could potentially happen, um, you know, they match up rather well against one another. So it's, it's that, that could be a close game. But VWS, not, and I'm not trying to sell them short by any means whatsoever or straight rip into TCM. But when you think about, like, the possible situations here, it's like, man, like, there's a lot of teams that, that complement each other really well which could lead to some, you know, I would say some coin flips, yep. you know. Oh, I would certainly agree. And talking about the, the skills that, that the SDK roster possess, learning what we did from the Ninja interview, right? Ninja saying, you don't really want to go straight into the hill each time on King of the Hill Warlord. What you want to be able to do is instead uh, go ahead and sit back on the bases, right, and pick the enemy off as they try to go to the hill and then set up. So I think uh, while it might be contradictory and, and what you, against what you'd expect, you can actually jump, you know, you need to move towards the outside of the map in order to control the center, which is something that might uh, not be immediately, you know, apparent to players, but controlling the map first, then getting control of the hill will be king in it. And like we said, it's going to be the more disciplined team which is able to pull it off. Yep, that's right. So uh, apologies again, guys, for the delay here as uh, we're hoping to get these players started and, and ready to go any second now. Um, you know, I think the, uh, you know, I think a lot of people have just been eagerly anticipating watching, uh, you know, more Halo. And it's certainly been uh, quite the show so far. We've had uh, two great matches and also, you know, game number one, if that's any indication, this tournament yeah. is just going to keep getting better and better and better as we move along through the bracket. Um, definitely some good stuff, man. Yeah, it was r really amazing stuff. And what I think we've also learned is that Warlord Flag does not disappoint in, in terms yeah. of intensity. Uh, both games, uh, you know, in the earlier match, excuse me, matches one and matches three going to uh, overtime. So we'll see if that happens once again uh, right up to that 15-minute mark, which is, of course, really exciting. And it's interesting, too, because Warlord Flag, uh, a game type that, you know, is a five-flag CTF game type. However, when you have teams of this skill level going up against each other, rarely do you actually hit that five-flag mark. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, you know, we saw, believe the hype do that to Purple Rain. Um, but I would not be surprised if uh, we actually, uh, you know, just continue to see, especially in this TCM straight ribbon matchup, we just continue to see close games here. So yeah, it's right. going to be fun. But, guys, we're dwindling down here in the evening time as... We're here at the ESL studio in Burbank, California. It's been uh, quite the fun time so far. Like we mentioned before, a lot of cool stuff here. Uh, you know, you got the giant warthog in the back, which is always a wonderful thing to see. And, you know, I think you had mentioned before, this is kind of like the kickoff to, uh, to Halo Fest, which is uh, one in itself a great event, but there's just three days of awesome Halo until the Master Chief Collection releases on November 11th. It's going to be a good time. It's going to be a good time to play some games again. Make sure you guys are tweeting, uh, you know, about the event and telling your friends about it. Make sure you tweet at Halo and at ESL to uh, get social and 
you know, of course, introduce people to competitive Halo because it is definitely one of a kind in, uh, in, in every single way. So. Yeah, taking a look at the, some of the predictions that we saw during the break, we saw a lot of uh, predictions coming in on Twitter, and a lot of people are now, uh, I see a lot of people choosing the agency, but still a few Optic Gaming, Optic Gaming fans pulling yeah. for their route through the loser's bracket. But with these two teams here, VWS and SDK, I think some teams might, some people might be look, overlooking these two squads. I think it, it wouldn't be, su I wouldn't be surprised if one of these two were in the finals. Yeah, oh, for sure. It would be... Uh you know, I, I think that, and again, just kind of like to echo the sentiments of the community, a lot of people were saying that SDK and Optic Gaming were going to be the ones that, you know, that, that can meet there. And, um, of course, if SDK ends up losing the series, and that definitely will not happen, um, which I would not be, uh, I would not be surprised, you know what I mean? Like, uh, if that were to be the case, just because of how crazy this whole tournament has been. But I think STK has the confidence going into this. VWS, though, I'm very confident that, uh, uh, you know, for them personally, I'm very confident that they are, they, they know what's at stake here. They know that they have all the capability to be able to come back into this lockdown Team Slayer game. This opening is going to be so important. And uh, actually, we're going to kick it off with Nated. He's going to be that player to watch. And I'm really curious to see what kind of start VWS has here, right? We know they can rally back. We know they're a good team. But off the break, how are they going to judge us, right? They don't want to go down to an early deficit. But of course, they do want to ensure that they have map control. So that risk reward scenario is going to be really interesting in the first few seconds of the match. Yep, that's right. So the map is being loaded presently. We're about to get into this one, guys. Lockdown Team Slayer VWS facing off against STK. And we are going to be kicking things off with none other than Nated. Let's uh, go ahead and hop into the action here as things are going to be kicking off. Let's make this one happen. All right, now jumping on board with Nated once again. This is game two and winners back at round one. VWS versus STK. STK currently with the lead one to zero. Right now, thank you so much for joining us at twitch.tv slash Halo. This is the 50K Halo Master Chief Collection launch invitational. Royal 2 lighting up with the sniper as he hits a double kill across the map. If you want to switch over to Royal 2, who's putting on a show, we'll go ahead and show you a little bit of that. Now tied three to three. We'll see if he can challenge this player right now. As we were saying, Royal 2 can be pretty deadly with the sniper. Oh. Hits the body shot, tosses a sniper off the map. That's not a terrible decision. That'll make sure that the enemy does not grab it. Yep, that's right. And uh, looking here to see what's up with Snake Bite. Now finding a player VR2. Actually, he's going to have no shield. Just trying to stay alive. And he will get picked off. And, and that's going to be uh, Nated, as a matter of fact. Yeah, Nated now in position. They have a one kill lead now pushing on Library. And like we said, a, this is now a very aggressive push here off the bat from both teams. Now Mikman with the sword. sword. Going to try to stay alive in the Library. But uh, before the match, we were wondering how this was going to play out, if teams are going to watch other tries to hit the jump to the bottom and oh. does not hit it. Looks like he wasn't sure if he wanted to go to the second uh, level right there or to the first level. Unfortunately, gets that suicide right there, and that's going to give him a little bit of time off the map. That's unfortunate. Now we're going to stay on board with him, though. They're down by three kills. We'll see if he can get his team back in gear and get back into this game. Yeah, oh, look at this boosting up. Nice play there, brilliant right there, play. but it might not pay off as they're trying oh. to get up, and he decides it might be better if he drops back down yeah. as that sword did not look too friendly. But yeah. I love that first try right there, boosting up to BR2. That's a classic play, Bring using another player to make sure you get on the oh, map. Gets the nice shot. They're going to trade there with Ogre 2. That's well done. Now, if we want to go back on board with Royal 2, now 15 to 8. The game is quickly slipping away from VWS now with sniper rifle control in the hands of STK. Yep. They've also got a seven kill lead, nearly double that of their opponent. Yeah, Royal 2 just going to try and hold this one down. Pressure is going to be coming up from uh, bottom at S1 here. Teammate's going to be there for the, uh, you know, at the very least for the stop. And wait a minute, no pressure oh, coming up, and he's going nice to get that shot melee. That was going to be legit. Who pays dearly for that one, 16 to 9. Yeah, right now, watching to see if someone dropped down. They do not now with a healthy lead. This is what I was saying. BWS does not want to let this happen. They're trapped at the BR Tower. Royal 2 hitting the shots he needs to to push BWS back, and earlier hitting those snipe shots to actually increase his team score. So nice stuff from them as they now have sniper rifle tower set up with the sniper in hand and a seven kill lead. If you're STK, you do not want to let this slip away. They just need to play smart for the rest of the match. Ooh. Hits the shot on Mikwa. Nice job. They're going to go for two. Forced to back down. Decides to reload. A nice job. They certainly have enough lead here where he can get away with that and just control this tower. Yep. He has uh, five bullets left in that sniper rifle, which if they're all headshots, you know, you guess it. Math is easy. He could go for five <laughs> kills on that. Um, but, uh, you know, the one thing you got to keep in mind is that D-scope, right? I mean, every time he's going to poke his head out, he's going to come right back out yep. of that scope. And that is, uh, you know, a good balancing mechanic there. It's definitely something you will see, uh, you know, players have oh. to compensate for. Oh my for goodness, Royal he too. gets uh, right there. A nice job to hit that no scope, though. Whew. If we want to show Snakebite, who just dropped the sword, he's going to leave that for a teammate, but the sniper rifle now in his hands. His team's still up by eight, 
It looks like someone behind him will grab that sword, so they will maintain control of both of those weapons. Now sitting on the Gandhi ledge that I was referencing earlier right there, you can actually sit on that doorway. It lets your head peek out just a little bit, and it's very hard for the enemy team to spot you. Yep, that's right. Snakebite trying to go for that shot, but he couldn't get a clean one because he just kept getting descoped every time he got shot upon. And uh, Snakebite looking to get on the ledge again. He's trying to go for the quick one, but not going to be the case here, as no one from SDK has been able to push up, but it seems as if... Oh, seems and this, as if we have some movement here that's from right BWS. Right now, Mikwin and Nated debating. They're under glass. That means they're nearly behind enemy lines. They're debating how they're going to push into the map right here. Taking nades from blue as well. They are weak. We'll see a third one coming in. Ogre 2 pushing in, but it looks like nice teamwork here. Amazing job there from BWS to stay in this match. Using some great teamwork there to lock that area down. See if they can push it now through glass. But unfortunately, Nated actually surprisingly pushing back. So uh, challenging there a player on the elbow. That's not going to do it for them. Two of his players died. you got to wonder why Nated didn't push there under glass with his teammates. They are both taken out, and now once again, they're down by nine kills. Yeah, I mean, you know, he, I guess he felt that he could provide them better cover from, uh, you know, the BR ramp and just looking over toward that mid bridge, maybe, you know, seeing if he can cause some problems there, but, you know, his, his two teammates getting picked off right away was definitely something that was unfortunate. Yeah, he might have, he might have just wanted to uh, divide right there, kind of their portfolio of map control, and instead sit back while the enemy team pushes together and kind of put confidence in that push. Uh, but unfortunately, it looks like it does not pay off for them as those two teammates do get taken down. Now 26 to 14, once again, STK with really complete map control. Nated once again going to try to push under glass, find Snake, but he's not in a position to push though right there because a knight, let's see if he can try to stay alive, going to try to pick to Snake off. Yeah, he needs to stay alive there, but of course, uh, right now, STK with excellent map control. They have the sniper rifle tower set up, and you got to wonder, Golden Boy, if that's going to be a trend through the rest of the tournament in Halo 2 and in Halo 2 Classic, we saw the BR Tower was king. However, so far, teams are looking to opt so far for that control of the Sniper Rifle Tower. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, it, you know, for, for whatever reason, it seems like that's just the preferred, uh, you know, approach for all these guys, of course. And uh, made it actually with that oh. shotgun. He's able to pick off one that's going to be Ogre 2. It's Ogre 2 is hanging out at the top of the lift there. And uh, Royal 2, as a matter of fact, as we jump back with STK, does have control of the snipe. He's going to get a body shot, though. And oh. he tried to get another headshot, but that turned out to be a body indeed. And Snakebite with that sword, too. He's going to get a cut, having to run away half shield as he manages to get out of dodge there. But still... You know, they uh, they lost a little bit of the control because Mikwin has... Oh, man, Mikwin has, with the AR two right bodies there. there, as a matter of fact. Yeah, nice job there, Mikwin with the AR, keeping his team in this match. But Golden Boy, I tell you, I got to look at the scoreboard now, 30 to 19. They're down by 11 with just over nine minutes left in the match. Certainly possible for them to come back, uh, the VWS side. But STK right now poised to advance through this winner's bracket right now as they're playing very well on Lockdown TS. And I think playing faster than we expected them to play. As I was mentioning earlier, VWS, a roster that can play this game Whoa. very quickly. Quickly. Uh, however, I uh, love what I'm seeing from STK so far. Yeah, Snakebite tried to stay alive there and uh, take advantage of that sword, but that was not going to be the case. Is uh, Let's see, 31 to 25 right now. So we're going to jump over to Legit, who has a sniper rifle. Let's see what he's going to do with And it. I got to say, they were just down. It was 30 to 17. It was around That's 30 to 17. Now it's 31 to 25 right now. Only a seven kill game instead of what was nearly a 15 kill game. So VWS is rallying back. Make no mistake about it. Yeah, and oh. Legit able to get a connection there with that shot there. Good stuff from uh, Legit as he's going to drop back and, you know, of course, just continue to patrol around the Sniper Tower. But his teammates pushing up on BR. He actually are going to get cleaned up. That was going to be goofy. That was a 31 to 33 game right that? here. Amazing stuff from VWS right now. Legit anchoring the Sniper Tower with the Sniper Rifle and now a two kill game. I can't say enough. VWS is back in the match. But you know what, though? Legit needs to be careful. His teammates are on the That's complete right. opposite side of the map here. Legit could leave himself exposed. That could potentially oh, and looks like lead to something. Two players right now are top middle. If we just saw that, uh, Nated and Legit, excuse me, Nated and Mikwin just went top middle. It looks like all the team is bottom blue. Let's switch over quickly to one of the players on the SDK side. They're all bottom blue right now and bottom green, all huddling down here. All four players are trapped right now. VWS has total map control with the sword at top blue. Legit with the sniper rifle at snipe. So Nated right now is behind enemy lines. He has the sword waiting for someone to lift. If we want to cycle through the SDK roster right now, we have Ogre 2 right here, bottom glass. You can see all four players oh. right here as that nade does come in, and they know they are all trapped down here. They need to stay alive. They're all in green. They have the lead. Golden Boy, this could go either way. 
process of elimination at this point is uh, really uh, what it was. And so now that they know that they're trapped, I mean, this is not so, good. But at the same time, though, you know, and, and this uh, is kind of... Kinda... Has, now Legit has moved over to top blue as well, if you want to show Legit very quickly. Now looking down with the sniper rifle, trying to get an angle on anyone who might be down low. We'll see if he can hit this shot. Now 34 to 31. Looks like one of the players of VWS did overextend themselves and challenged alone. So a three-kill lead still for STK. But I wanted to point that out, right? STK knows that they have the lead, so they can play this one the, slow I, and let VWS get anxious, and that and I, could end up causing them. Yeah, I tell you what, Golden Boy, we haven't seen something like this in a long time. Lockout and the structure of the map kind of lends itself to this. As kills now being exchanged, now 35 to 32. That means two kills were now traded, and we're still in the same situation. I tell you what, also, Golden Boy, worth noting, if VWS is able to continue to kill one player at a time, they'll actually force that bottom spawn every time. But now Ogre 2 might now be forced to spawn bottom. But it looks like, finally, STK has pushed out of the bottom of the map. Now 36 to 35. They're going to be pushing on Legit right now. Yeah, Legit needs to be uh, be very careful here. And he's going to see if he can pick a player off as he uh, jumps up on the ramp. But that's not going to be the case. Nate's flying in, though. That's and actually coming the from the bottom. They have gained the lead. And Legit is going to be able to secure the lead, making it 40 to 37 as the blue team are able to answer right back. Brilliant work here out of VWS to kind of play that one out and let STK and make I the mistake. And I can't believe it, Golden Boy. Let's switch over to the STK point of view one more time. Let's go to Ogre 2. All four players of STK trapped bottom green once again. They are trapped here. VWS uh -oh. displaying amazing map control right there as Legit hits that body shot and STK is falling apart. And now this is where VWS is going to thrive because they know that they have them trapped in there. They have to push out. They they have to make moves because oh. it keeps going like this. They are going to. This and is going to be over. It's and here be comes the push. Over two now pushing with Hines. They clean up that kill now. 42 Good to 39. Play, we'll see if they can clean up this kill. And Legit has uh -oh. the shotgun. Lands the shot. Hines with a nice job there. Keeps his team in this match now. 44 to 41. We'll see if VWS can maintain this lead. This is absolutely insane. Bravo, a two-point lead, but STK have spawned on the sniper side of the map. Goofy's going to be in a world of hurt here if he's not careful. Oh my Nate's goodness, flying somehow in. he stays alive. Amazing stuff from Goofy. VWS has two players under glass right now as the whole battle has shifted from blue now to sniper. NBR highs needs to stay alive. They can't give up these oh, kills. They no. give away two now. Looks like it's 46 to 42. Yeah, and it seems like uh, World 2 actually just, uh, he was he ended up getting cleaned up on that one. Ogre 2 had the sword. Not going to happen for him. Goofy with the shotgun. Now with the sword in hand. Looking over by BR3. See if he can find anybody. 47 to 44. Three points left and they're going to be able to win this game. But never mind. It's going to be a two point lead here though for VWS which is very fragile at the late part of this game. You have to be careful. But Naden now. He's going to be pushing in inside of the BR yep, tower. He, he just got the kill on Hines. That's huge. He's behind gonna be line. He's going to try to clean this up now. 49 to 45. Only one kill left and that's going to be it. VWS wow. rallies back and wins game two as the crowd arrives. Amazing stuff here from VWS. They were down by three kills, How? trapped STK in the bottom green. And I tell you what, it just so happened that once VWS started rolling with map control, STK with a series of bad spawns, and they continued to spawn in the bottom of green tower twice over. VWS made no mistake about capitalizing on that opportunity. Amazing stuff from VWS. Now series tied one to one. It's like STK, when they got trapped the first time, you're thinking to yourself like, okay, maybe someone's gonna make a foolish play, make a mistake, and you know, that could end up costing them. But no, that actually was not the case and here. And I gotta say, it's even though Mick went actually- brilliant. Mikwin actually pushed under glass and gave them another kill, giving them a four kill lead. However, VWS did not give up. And what I was worried about was if STK pushed out and got a few kills, they would get another green spawn. Yeah. And that's exactly what happened. All four players need to push out of that area. Otherwise, they will have that proximity spawn and they will spawn near each other. So amazing stuff from VWS to win that game too. Um, we're now tied one to one heading into game three, uh, the finals of that series. Yeah, this is going to be a good one, guys. King of the Hill on Warlord coming up next. Who's going to take it? Will STK be able to close this series out 2-1, to one, or will VWS ride that momentum to a victory and potentially meet the winner of Straight Ribbon and TCM Gaming? Find out after this break. You are one of our most treasured instruments. Long have you led your fleet with honor and distinction. But your inability to safeguard Halo was a colossal failure. Soon the great journey shall begin, but when it does, 
You shall be left behind. Gentlemen, we're lucky to have you back. The Navy has lost one of its best. Flip space ruptures directly off our battle cluster. Master Chief, defend this station. Cortana, what exactly am I looking at? That is another halo. So this is what my father found. The Prophet of Regret is planning to activate Halo. Are you sure? Yes, tactical Marines! <laughs> All right. Shoot. Your prophets have promised you freedom, but you will find no salvation on this ring. The prophets have betrayed us. Impossible. No. If he leads the Covenant fleet to Earth, they won't stand a chance. You have to stop him. I need a weapon. going in. Four remaining platforms are now ready for remote activation. From here? Ma'am, without a destination solution. We are not losing that ship. And there you saw all of the amazing, so well not all of them, but a good portion of the cinematics there for uh, Halo 2 Anniversary. Of course, big shout out to Blur. Those guys kicked absolute butt in uh, reimagining the, you know, the Halo universe. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's been uh, quite the day here of Halo 2 action as we've had some great matchups, but I think this one definitely has taken the cake so far as, uh, you know, match of the day thus far because that lockdown Team Slayer game, I mean, there was a point in time where VWS was down, I think it was 17 or 17 to 9 or 18 to yeah, 9. And also 17 to 29, I believe. It was and nearly yes. a 15 point lead. We had VWS down 17 to 29. And what I was saying was SDK just needed to keep playing their game. Unfortunately for them, they weren't able to do that. And that, that allowed VWS to kind of rally back with control. You saw le legit anchoring the sniper rifle at the sniper tower while his team ran around and pretty much brought their team back into the match. They're only down yeah. by two kills. It became a three kill lead when STK was turtled down into the bottom of the blue base. Um, but, you know, once STK was down there, I liked what I saw from VWS, right? You need to maintain your composure, take it one kill at a time. Yep. They were able to rack up the lead and then finish that match out clean. And you can bet that they're going to be riding the momentum. Taking a look at STK on your screen right now, looks like a very deflated team, very different from when we saw them after that first game. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, you're always uh, thinking about, you know, the mistakes you made, but that's the thing you have to look forward. You have to think, you know, beyond that. And, um, you know, uh, you made mention of, you know, how uh, SDK played or how VWS played that part. And, and yeah, it was it's very easy, you know, to be foolish and make, a, you know, a dumb play, right? And, and just blindly pushing in, you know, giving up positioning on the map. Um, VWS, you know, and, and it's funny too because they actually did send one guy down, and it did become a four-point lead right, while did. VWS, uh, while SDK was still uh, turtling inside of the, uh, you know, inside of the green. Yeah, I think what SDK could have done there, right there, potentially was push straight to under glass and get out of that area once they got that first kill, uh, which might, might have. Uh, made the match end a little bit differently, but instead uh, the match went towards VWS as they continually forced the enemy team spawn at the bottom of that green tower, uh, really exercising a lot of map knowledge and historical you know, knowledge about how that map works, right? Lockout, one of the a community favorite uh, within the game of Halo, so I love what I saw from VWS as they were able to lock that down. Yep, that's right. Waiting for the players to join up here and uh, get everything going. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I guess, you know, looking looking forward to King of the Hill on Warlord, we got to talk about this because we saw this with uh, the agency Optic Gaming matchup. Um, at the beginning of the game, it seemed like Optic Gaming was, they were playing great. They, they, they had control, yep. they had 30 points on the board, and it seemed like everything was going right. And then somewhere along the line, 
just, it all fell apart, crumpled yep. like a cookie. And Optic Gaming just could not get back into it. Uh, Agency were able to just continue to pile on points, and they were very aggressive, yep. very aggressive in that. Um, kind of changing the approach too, focusing on more of a plat-heavy, uh, you know, holding approach. And and I have to say, for both of these teams here, is that kind of do they do they look at that and maybe take some notes? I mean, you have to at that point. The way that they dismantled Optic and that. Yeah, I think. I mean, the goal right there on that map is to essentially let the central hill go, hills go. Right. I can't. Believe Believe what we saw Hysteria do on the agency, what he was able to do, stay alive for 25 seconds on the top hill against yeah. a team like Optic Gaming. That's almost unheard of, right? Typically, you let those hills go and you kind of even out, right? Maybe you each get a few seconds and then you wait till the side hills on the platforms when you can lock down the flag areas, those back areas where the flags are yeah. actually located in CTF. If you can lock down those areas, that'll let you control almost every sight line into that area and really act as if that's a base during the hill there. And that's what teams are looking to do. So I think what both teams want to do here is lock down map control, but I can't say how important enough it is to get ready for that next hill move, right? Even if you get the full time on a hill, yeah. uh, you need to be ready to move for the next hill. Otherwise, the enemy team is just going to do the same. They're going to catch you off guard. They're going to lock down the central control points of the map, and you're not going to be able to rally back until the next hill, which is going to forfeit a lot of time. Yep, that's right. It's uh, definitely going to be a challenge here for uh, you know for both teams to kind of figure to you know get the feel of one another. Right? See what what the approach is going to be. So we just want to update you guys. That we're going to get this one started in a bit. Really sorry about the uh, you know the delays there, but we are you know constantly always looking to make sure that all the players are good to go and there's no issues whatsoever because that's uh, the experience we want to have here, not only for the players as well, but for the viewers. You know we don't want to have uh, you know some issues and, and whatnot. Um, so I guess looking forward here for either team, uh, you know, or I guess looking forward in the bracket, because sure. like coming up after, th after this game right here, we have Straight Rippin versus one of the EU's finest in TCM Gaming. Um, how do you feel about both teams in that match, if we could kind of just touch base on that for a little bit? Yeah, I think the straight TCM match is going to be really great. What I'm looking forward to seeing is if TCM can can, can maintain that composure that we saw at Gamescom, right? Yeah. If they can come out and, you know, they're feared as a top team at Gamescom, because as you said, one of the best teams in Europe. Straight Rippin certainly not going to be taking them lightly. Straight Rippin has a ton of top talent looking at that roster. Straight Sick, Ryan Noob, Roy, and T Squared, right? Uh, players who have some players that are newer, right? Straight Sick and Ryan Noob, Roy and T Squared, Halo yeah. 2 Legends. So, uh, you know, you can bet that not only is TCM Gaming, you know, not taking them lightly, but I think Straight, on the other hand, with a little bit less teamwork, right? right excuse me, um, time playing together. Uh, so Straight's going to need to prove to us that they that they have the teamwork to take out a team like TCM that's been playing together for months. Yeah, that's right, that's right. But you know, I mean, where's our boy? You know, I mean, you gotta you gotta talk about UMG Halo, uh, Halo Four when uh, you know it, it was Onyx Team Slayer and yep. Roy just what was it like? He just I don't I don't remember the specific numbers. I just remember but yelling a lot. You yeah, know? I remember Roy, a player who hadn't played a lot prior to that tournament, <laughs> and just came, I don't think he played at all prior and, to that yeah, tournament. He came out and like, put on such a show, and, and I'm excited to see what he's able to do in Halo 2 Anniversary. Right, Halo 2 Anniversary closer to home, of course, uh, with his uh, all the success that he had on Team 5K in Halo 2, and eventually uh, Halo Reach with Team Instinct. Uh, so excited to see what he's able to do alongside T-Squared. Yep, that's right. And, and you know, you, you mentioned T-Squared there, uh, a name that's been uh, very well known in uh, competitive Halo for a very long time. Um, he, uh, again, I just got to highlight this, been watching the streams. It seems like they're, they're, they're in a clear understanding of one another. The confidence is there. The positivity is there. Um, and that's going to be so crucial. But TCM, though, we, we make mention of this numerous times. They've played, you know, Halo 2 Anniversary in a tournament environment two times, which not a lot of teams, uh, not three, not no team here can have that because no one competed at Gamescom from the United States. And uh, they, they've proven, they've proven, you know, time and time again that uh, people under, you know, they, they undersell them. Right, and uh, it, it's it's unfortunate, you know, for for that to be the case because uh, when I think about this squad, I immediately just put my attention on Chalky. But even to an extent, you know, you have you have uh, Two Foxy who had a had a great uh, Gamescom as well. Ramirez, uh, Riots, I mean, these guys, they, they, they show up and no one's giving them the time today. And I think that's really playing to their advantage because now they're, they're playing purely for themselves. Oh, certainly. I mean, they have nothing to lose coming into this tournament. You know, I think a lot of people are quick to write them off because they haven't made a huge splash in the American yeah. and no North American Halo scene. But I'm excited to see what they can bring. I, I, I don't think they have anything, anything to lose. Uh, the, the only thing that could be fighting against them, I think, at this point, is the 16 hours of travel that it took them to get here. That's true. Um, we'll 
see if they're acclimated. Uh, but these teams are, of course, fighting right here for this trophy that you see presented in front of the UNSC Warthog. All uh, right, they're a sideshow collectible launch invitational champions trophy. Each team has their eye on not only this, but also the $20,000 check that comes with it. That's right. A lot of money up for grabs here at the... Uh you know, at the launch invitational, uh, $50,000 in total. So really looking forward to what more we're going to have in this tournament. Uh, teams that have moved on thus far, Agency made their way as they're going to be facing off against Believe the Hype. And uh, in the loser's bracket, we had an update before Opti Gaming was up 1-0 to zero, uh, against Purple Rain. So uh, loser's bracket happening on off-site, uh, off as a matter, or not off-site, but actually, you know, on the side stage. Uh, just got an update, though, that Opti Gaming did win their matchup against Purple Rain, so Purple Rain eliminated from the tournament. It was a 2-0 sweep there, um, which, uh, you know, I, I, I told Gandhi that was going to happen, but, uh, you know, <laughs> he didn't care. That, that's, that's the reason why I love the dude. Um, so, uh, so yeah, I, I guess, you know, with that being said, you know, again, we're really sorry about the delay. We're waiting for all the players to get into the lobby and get everything uh, situated and ready to go. We yeah, thank you 110% uh, for your patience. Uh, we were just informed that the game is about to begin. So, again, guys, you are awesome back at home. Uh, you know, spam what face if you want. You love no that one, thing, huh? No, no one will be mad at you guys if you spam what face. He loves that face. I love it. It's, it's, it's taken out here. It's also taken off, and, and the entire Twitch community just loves it. It has, now. actually. Uh, so, uh, Ryan Oob, who, uh, and actually Mick Wynn as well, who, like they play Dota and they frequent Dota streams, um, said that they they seen, <laughs> they saw the what face spam uh, popping up a couple times. So, uh, actually, I have the chat over here on the side. So, here they know, come. I, here here, come, they here come. comes the what face. You I know, hope again, you're happy. No, I no, hope no you're one's going to fault you guys if you want to do it. You know, just nothing but absolute oh, love. Um, <laughs> and, yep. Oh man, that, that emote's been okay. So fun fact: that emote has uh, been, you know, active for about a week and a half now. Um, actually, no, it's been active for yeah, yeah. I would say about a week and a half, and uh, it's already. Last I checked, it was used sixty thousand. You know what I times. love is that you guys have backend stats at Twitch that track which emotes are being used. That's yeah, pretty neat. Yeah, and now I'm waiting for, uh, but I haven't seen the updated numbers, and I'm and I'm guessing with the amount of pe you know people who's obviously know that this is the greatest emote in Twitch. It's going to replace Kappa. It's a hands oh, down. that's a bold statement. It's a bold statement. That's a very very bold, it's a bold statement. Bold statement, Cotton. Um, all right, so with that being said, the matchup, the players are in the lobby by the Beard of Zeus. It seems like we're going to get this one going here in just a little bit. And uh, the players are getting ready to go. Uh, you know, obviously fist bumps and bound as they know that the pressure is on. King of the Hill on Warlord. We've seen, you know, we saw this in that Opti Gaming Agency matchup. Agency controlled the game. Yep. But I have a feeling it's going to be a little bit more down the middle here. So... This one, starting up as the map is loading up. Who do you want to kick it off with first, Bravo? You know, I'd love to see uh, Legit right here. I think he played so well in that last match. Uh, he with did. His he team was, he make, was a difference maker. Yeah, making sure that his team was on par. I think his whole team actually rallied together to come back in that game. But I'm particularly interested to see if VWS is going to be rally, able to rally back, win two straight, and send STK to the loser's bracket. I don't think we thought that that was a possibility after game one, but VWS has proven us all wrong as we're kicking off Warlord King of the Hill. Of course, first to 300 points is going to win. To earn points, you need to stand within the hill and rack up time. We'll see which team is able to do that. And the game is now underway. We're going to go ahead and jump into that. Kicking things off with the JIT of VWS, finding a player bottom middle. And right now, both teams, the first goal, Golden Boy, is to get the control of the map. Then you can worry about getting time. Warlord has proven to be so fun to watch and so intense for these players to be participating in. So looking forward here is uh, Legit's actually going to be pushing up. A is going to be up for the picking as only 12 points have been put on the board. And that was from STK who got control. But now it seems as if A going over to BWS. Oh. They're getting some time in there. And that's pouring at the beginning here. Yeah, I tell you what, Legit actually just used that little jump there from that shotgun platform, that short platform to top middle. That's a pretty quick shortcut that can save you a lot of time on the map. So we're already seeing in round one players using that new skill jump. Yeah, and uh, off the respawn, Legit able to find one that BR so solid from him and uh, 10 seconds left on A as it's going to be making its way over to the base here for B. Oh, oh legit. Man. 
It's on get the receiving end there. of the shotgun. Nice job there. I want to see what's up with STK. Let's switch over to Ogre 2. We'll see what he's doing on the plat right now. His team is up 17 to 6. But as we saw, early leads in King of the Hill don't mean much unless you can sustain it through the control of the map throughout the entire match now. So really both these teams trying to battle and get control so that B is really the first hill where you can start to rack up Ooh. time. Oh boy. Ogre 2 is going to get picked off there. That was actually going to be Naded who pushed up. Quite aggressive. Only six points on the board here, but still very early in this matchup. 35 seconds to pick, so every single second that you're holding the hill, that means Ooh. that you're getting a point. And Ogre 2 up to respawn, not having good luck there yet again. Able to pick off one kill, but not quite able to stay alive. Two down right now for VWS. Three down right now for VWS, as Goofy is going to be the last man standing, pushing oh, it with no. the camo. He's going to whip on that no. melee, and he's going to get picked out. Yeah, Ogre 2 right there, smelling Goofy coming up behind him. Make sure he cleans up that kill. Uh, we'll stay on board with Goofy to see if he can redeem himself. Uh, right now, that was amazing awareness from Ogre 2. Now 34 to 7, VWS is down. Mm. STK off to a good start. If they can keep this up, they're going to build a lead that we saw similarly to the agency. Yeah, well, uh, you know, VWS is uh, going to be losing two guys here at this time, and they're getting them off to respawn. But Naden oh, tried my to stay goodness, up. Amazing and trade kill. there with Ogre 2. A nice job there to make sure that he traded. We want to go ahead and see what's going on with Hines on the STK side. Haven't seen a lot of him this series. Now 35 to 7. As I said, not much movement here as, as both teams are trying to feel each other out for the Sea Hill. Neither team wants to overcommit and potentially, you know, lose map control for 30 seconds. If you do so, you'll really see a deficit on the scoreboard. So both teams playing a little bit hesitant right now. Yeah, which is actually a, uh, you know, far cry from what we saw in game number one where Agency was just taking it to Optic and yep. then they started to slow down. But we're, we're, you know how it's going to happen here. And it's going to be slow. Needs to stay alive. They're surprised yep. that he overextended himself right there because the hill was at sea, but the hill yep. will be moving very short. Shortly, STK still maintaining control. I love what I'm seeing from them now as they do rack up their score to 44 to 7. Yeah. Uh, BWS yet to hit double digits, and we're three minutes into the match. I was just going to say that, you know, uh, we, we know that it's kind of gotten a little slow here in the beginning, but it's it's going to get crazy uh, toward that midpoint in the game if uh, either team is not careful. Now D is going to be right for the pick, and here is uh, Ogre 2 oh, is going to be pushing forward. <laughs> he, he Ogre did. 2 seems to get spooked near the portal. He's, yeah, uh, he, he's, he's always expecting someone around the corner there, and because uh, it's, it's happened quite a bit in this uh, in this tournament. But in any case, Ogre 2 finding some nades over on the left side. Look, he's I love what he's doing away. right now, right? Doesn't he not need to challenge that angle? Instead, he forces Nate towards him right there. Whoa. Almost cleans up that kill, but regardless, gets a lot of time on the clock for his team. Let's go ahead and see what Legit is up to on the VWS side, switching back over to the other side of the stage. Now, 58 to 11. Finally, VWS racking up some time. Yeah, and uh, one thing I got to point out is Legit's use of the uh, portals here, man. I mean, you know, he had a long range position before, man, just slipped through the portal, came up right behind the D Hill. So that's, uh, you know, again, just a credit to him. You know, he might try to camo awareness. jump right here. What he's going to do, he's going to grab the shotgun on the way. Now get the quick camo. Love the camo. that play right there. As he saw that earlier, he had his eyes set in it. But nice, nice job there, I got to say, from STK to neutralize that threat. They did not want Legit getting away with camo. As you said, Legit, a major threat around the portals. And I can't even imagine with camo how much he'd be able to sneak around the map. Now 66 to 26 is the score. Yeah. Oh, man, that is unfortunate. That's Legit four dead for out. BWS, Alex. Yes, four dead presently as uh, we're going to just jump over to SCK because they have full control of this game. 79 to 26. And they're going to come flying out of this base right now. They're likely all going to be spawning around blue, potentially getting split spawns at red and blue, but STK is poised to maintain this map control through the rest of the match. Yeah, I mean, they don't, they don't, they're not doing anything wrong here. You know, they, they, they've they lost control maybe one or two times, but it's really just Look at Ogre great. 2 just waltzes into the base, takes wow. out Nated, not even anyone else challenging, really making a statement there as he just pulls through the portal. Now they're up. 90 to 32 as STK is going to maintain control. Amazing objective play from them. Yeah, Royal 2 just going to continue to hold this one down, knowing that he has teammates there to cover his back. Going back over to A here as Royal 2 on the push as he finds Mick with two players. As a matter of fact, VWS putting in two shots apiece for both of them, so they know that they're not in the best positions here. Shield pop for Mikwin, as that's going to be unfortunate for him. Oh. But oh, Ooh, somehow did not get that trade right there. It looks not. like somehow he stays alive, but uh, Heinz still. has uh, Heinz has camo, by the way. Oh yeah, let's take a look at Heinz now. 106 to 32. Heinz has his second chance with camo earlier. He got taken out. We'll see if he can instead use this to make sure his team maintains that lead and potentially even builds upon it. Now 107 to 30. He's going to want to get up top here. We'll see if he actually tries to move up on this platform uh, that right there at much better vantage point, and he can do things like that. Just continue to cause problems here for VWS. This could be a triple, the triple kill for Hines as he just shows up big time here, and oh. he's going to get the extermination. What a play out of Hines here. That is what you want to see. 
STK coming out strong, 130 to 33. And I think right there, Hines did exactly what we were all expecting him to do with that camo. He had redemption, gets the extermination. For those of you at home, that is killing all four of the enemy players, not necessarily within four seconds of each other. That would be your overkill. But getting those four kills means he eliminated each player one by one. Now they're up 130 to 35. And as I said, what he did was build upon that lead with his team. Amazing slaying from Heinz. Yep, and uh, B, though, will be in the control of VWS, which they need every single point that they could possibly get. Snakebite and Rural 2 are engaged presently as uh, we'll actually jump over to Nated and uh, VWS because they have to fight back. Now that was going to be a shot for them. It seems like Camo is, uh, was picked yeah, up, that went to, Yeah, that went to Royal 2. He died, so he burned that Camo. Nated yeah. made sure he took him out. So VWS right now wants to try to get some time on the clock. Mikwin doing a really nice job in the hill, actually racking up right here what looks like 20 seconds over the past few. Yeah, that's right. Uh, 130 to 56 as VWS struggling here to be able to maintain control. C is going to be coming up here in just a second. Oh, great nade nade there. Yeah, Gotta love that classic uh, Warlock nade right there, knowing that he can bounce that off the platform to hit the portal if anyone is hanging out around there, which we've seen a lot of players liking to do. It allows you to really be versatile in the angles that you challenge from right there. Now 130 to 73 as they start to bring this match back. Yeah, and, and this is something that happened in that Team Slayer game. And I mean, granted, it's a different game type objective based, but still, it's there where you have to ask yourself, you know, STK having a hard time closing areas in that uh, in that lockdown matchup. I don't know if that's going to necessarily happen here, but it definitely is something that you got to point out because, I mean, you know, they, they've been able to come back. This team was held at one point under, you know, they, they were not able to get into double digits. They were held under 10 points. That's right. And uh, now it seems like they're getting competitive with them, right? 130 to one, uh, to, uh, excuse me, to 83. Yep, we'll see uh, if they if can Pines hold can... this out for a little bit we and be able Pines to come back. camo round three. We'll see if he can That's do true. just as much damage here. He's going to keep the enemy team at bay. Walks into the hill for just a second. He'll likely drop if he gets challenged, though, as his hill now is going to move to D in just a moment. Going to rack up some time here. Uh, nice job. It's going to be oh. difficult for the enemy to find him. Right now, he just wants to stay alive. Surprisingly, he tries to stick wow. with the other side, but I love the spot he's in right now. He can't be challenged from too many angles, and they continue to increase their lead. Yep, and uh, having that camo in there is going to throw everyone for a loop because they know that he's like, well, where is he? Where is he located? there, yeah. but... <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, 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 so now Naden pushing up. Hines is going to be able to secure that one, and the pressure come from behind as Hines will get taken out. So... Yeah, I gotta SDK say, Hines definitely it down. got redemption on the first camel run. He has certainly made up for that as his team is oh, now yeah. at a dominating lead. We'll go ahead and see what VWS is up to. Perhaps jump on board with Nated, who's just jumped through the portal now, challenging, gets that comeback kill. Mm -hmm. That means that he was killed three times before that without picking up a kill, so he's back in the match. And we'll see if uh, VWS now Goofy getting challenged from multiple angles, tries to stay alive, wins that battle though. And oh, oh. excuse me, now wins the battle against Ogre 2. Looks like that shot did not connect, so now 162 to 85. And it looks like we're seeing more of the same though, Golden Boy. VWS started the rally back, but once again, STK making sure that that lead is strong enough yeah. to keep VWS at bay. Well, and that was the worry that I have for STK, right? Because we saw that in the lockdown game where, you know, VWS was able to come back midway through, and STK just did not expect that to happen. I'm like, well, are, are STK having, having trouble, like, closing out here? Because that, that could be a big problem, especially for a team that many believe could make it to the finals. But for VWS, though, they can't allow uh, STK to get the garbage time, which, you know, like those, like, two to three seconds, or excuse me, the, the two to, to five second time there. Right. That time is, is frustrating, right? Because that's when you can kind of play with that mathematically impossible territory. Yep. And that is something that VWS has to be cautious about. Yeah, let's go ahead and switch over to Ogre 2 right now. It's 168 to 108. Still looking to get back in this match. Now Ogre 2 will be back in just a minute. We'll see what he does off the respawn. Yep, Ogre 2 here, uh, you know, one of the greatest Halo players of all time back here at the Launch Invitational. They do have control of E, but they're not going to get the time that's needed. But they are going to just be able to get walk right into A, unopposed. That's just been something that's been happening all throughout this matchup here. VWS has been struggling with that double kill for Ogre 2 as he was able to take out two guys with relative ease here. 172 to 112, finding another player as well. He's chasing after the kill here. He might be able to get this, but it's not, it doesn't really matter all that much because it's all about the pressure, and SDK has been absolutely succeeding in that category. Yeah, that hill is back up on top middle. Ogre 2 doing such a good job. I think he's been alive for about a minute and a half now, just constantly turning his head and oh, wow. doing things like that, just cleaning up the kills. The STK team is laying such a solid foundation for Ogre 2 to thrive right now as he's just cleaning up his kills, turning his head every direction, portaling through and staying alive. He, he might be on two minutes now of being alive. Amazing stuff there from Ogre 2 and might stay alive here as well. 
finally oh. gets taken down. We'll go ahead and switch over to the VWS side, see if they can get on board. Let's go over to Mikwin, who actually was just taken out. And excuse me, all four members of oh, VWS man. down once again as this hill now has moved. We'll go to Royal 2, who's now racking up some new time for STK. But I do got to point out, though, that VWS were able to close the gap quite a bit with that A hill. Yep. So uh, if VWS can manage to get these plats, right, just just get this kind of control, that that could potentially, you know, get them back in this game. They have a lot of time to work with. Three minutes and 42 seconds left on the clock. B is going to be open here. And uh, Ogre 2 having to deal with it. He managed to stay alive, my goodness. Yeah, and Royal 2 actually getting that squatter medal for uh, hanging out in that hill a little bit too long and squatting there and uh, <laughs> potentially getting yelled at right there for doing too well for his team as they're now up 198 to 133. STK still with amazing map control right here. Now finding Goofy able to take out that kill. And now right now they're just making sure they maintain uh, map control and slaying power. Yep, that's right. And the uh, Invis uh, camo is going to be up. World 2 gets that one. And B will not have anyone on it presently. It's only going to be about seven seconds. But that's that garbage time I was talking about the SDK was getting. Because, you know, Warlord's a small map. So you'll be able to get, you know, around the map in no time. Oh, but this, I like this play. With World the 2 is going to use pocket. this jump up right here. He's going to pop up right here and get this kill right now on Mikwin. Easy kill. Ouch. He's going to try to stay alive. But there's a player in the vent, so that's going to be tough. But Royal 2 somehow staying alive. Still staying alive. Oh, and man. doing what we call strong siding away. That trademark move. Putting your head down so it's a bit more difficult to get that final headshot from an enemy player who might be standing behind you. But nice stuff from Royal 2. Let's go ahead and back over to VWS, see if they have what it takes to get back into this match. 233 left on the clock, still possible. Yep, that's right. I mean, you know, you have to think they're only going to be down presently by about 51 seconds here. Actually, 50 seconds to be exact. And with two minutes and 23 seconds left on the clock, this is doable. They will be able to cut into this lead that STK has been able to establish quite a bit if they keep getting the body on C, which they have been doing successfully. Now Nated actually drifting around here, and if he continues oh. to put shots in and be a nuisance, his teammates will be able to clean them up, but with that garbage time left there, yep, STK is going to get that, and uh, now it's going to be moving over to D, and STK gets control yet again. And unfortunately for Nated there, his team was not able to keep that composure around the hill. He gets taken out, so that's gonna, not going to be good for VWS, as STK is able to break that setup, and they're going to rack up even more time. Yep, and uh, VWS is nated, who has uh, 12, it's, what is it, 219 to 170 hill offense there. Royal 2 is actually able to take out Mikwin. Let's see what VWS is going to do here. The pressure's gotta, on. Yeah, I got to say, Golden Boy, look how important the portals are in almost every game type, right? It'll, because they do have a oh. cross the map, right, they can send you at such different angles. We're seeing so many top players use those and use them so well. Unfortunately, Nate did not able to put them to great use there. Uh, but now 219 to 171 as they stay in this match now and legit trying to push in, pick up this kill, gets that one hill offense, tries to find another player, oh, tries to get no. but gets taken out. STK doing such a good job of making sure VWS isn't able to rack up any solid time just yet. Yeah, 230, as a matter of fact, to 172. And again, it's still very doable here for VWS. I mean, they're only down by about 50 or so points. Uh, one minute remaining, though. They need every single minute, every single second, excuse me. And I don't know if that's going to be the case. As a matter of fact, psyching through everyone from VWS, no, that is not going to be the case. They're going to continue to rack up time. It's mathematically impossible. VWS is going to the loser's bracket. STK moving on to the next round to face the winner of Straight Ribbon and TCM Yeah, Gaming. I'm taking a look at the STK booth right now. They just realized that the time has run out for the enemy team to catch up, and they had a celebration. They are pretty excited to be moving on here. You know, as we said, one of the players you'll see, but you'll see the players uh, start to stop, uh, start to uh, no longer move, as we said. Uh, that's mathematically impossible. So both teams are actually right now mentally just getting ready for their next match, knowing what they need to do. STK heading to the winner's bracket, and on the other side, VWS getting ready for their loser's bracket road, which will not be easy. No. No, not at all, because you're going to be dealing with, uh, you know, either Straight Ripping or TCM Gaming, who is going to be very, very hungry for yep. a win. On the other side, though, VWS, you know, I, I'm not counting them out by any means whatsoever. Uh, we knew that these matches were going to be tough. We knew that this was anyone's ball game here going, coming into the Halo Master Chief Collection Launch Invitational. BWS, though, uh, still in high spirits, which is what you want to see uh, for a team. Yeah, it's true. I mean, to have players talking about the last match, right, ready for their next match in loser's bracket, that's key. If a team starts to get down on themselves, that will likely be the end of the road for them. So, BWS, I, I don't expect that that's the last of them. Uh, SDK will be moving on in the winner's bracket. If we could take a look at the stats right here, Hines going 22 and 23, Royal but Ro look at Royal 2, 44 and 18. What? Amazing stuff from him. Amazing assists. Look at the assists from the STK side uh, compared to the assists on the VWS side. Players like Mikwin only hitting 9, Legit only hitting 10. On the other side, we have 22 and 20 
from Heinz and Snakebite. Amazing stuff there on the board, so a uh, really nice performance from them. But I gotta say, I saw a few big numbers in the kills department from VWS, however, they just weren't able to get to the objective. So once again, yeah. uh, you know, when you're playing an objective game type, that needs to be the main focus. Yeah, that's very true. But of course, guys, now we're gonna have a great matchup coming up next. TCM Gaming facing off against Straight Rippin'. Guys, this is going to be one that you do not want to miss by any means whatsoever. The return of T-Squared, you know, facing off against what could be, uh, you know, the team that many people are sleeping on here. Yep. Looking forward to seeing Chalky back on the sticks yet again. It's going to be a good one. Don't go anywhere. This is the Halo launch, inv Halo the Master Chief Collection launch invitational. We have an interview, as a matter of fact, uh, coming up in just a bit. So we'll dive into that uh, when that is ready. Uh, Clutch, of course, getting that guy ready to go. I don't know who that's going to be. But, uh, you know, Bravo, I guess before we throw it to Clutch for this interview, any any thoughts going into the straight rip and TCM matchup players to watch in specific? I mean, of course, the, the, the big one to watch right there is going to be T-squared, right? We want to know what he's able to do. He's back in the game. He's brought with his he's brought with him some top talent, right? So yeah. on the straight side, that's who I'm looking at. Second player I'm watching is Roy. I want to see if he's just as consistent as always, and I expect that he will be. On the TCM side, I think we're all looking at Chalky. We'll see if he can go on fire with the sniper rifle once again. Yeah, it's going to be a good one. I'm, I'm really, really excited for that one, uh, of course. And uh, do not do not go anywhere, because it's going to be a great game. So with that said, we have Clutch on the floor with Heinz. Clutch, what's going on, buddy? Thank you, gentlemen. Heinz was celebrating in the player pod for a little bit, but now he's joining me. Heinz, you're excited, obviously. A fantastic win up against a team that maybe was a little, little underestimated, uh, a couple of these teams coming in. But let's talk about map number one first. A lot of flag denies. How was your team able to organize who is going when to get those flags back? Just constant communication. You know, you got to know, like, okay, he's running the flag. Well, where is he running it? Because someone on the spawn is going to look there. I throw a grenade, get a kill. Maybe the other guys running behind him, get a double kill. Our communication was really great because we obviously haven't played this game before. It was more important to focus on that. Now, we had talked earlier before. You said your team was lacking discipline when it came to lockdown. We saw that happen. What went wrong for you guys? Well, we were playing great. Unfortunately, we got that blue spawn, and since we haven't played the game before, it's hard to realize what's the best option to do when you're sitting in that blue room. I'm sure people saw all four of us looking at each other. We knew we were screwed, but we didn't give up. Unfortunately, it didn't work out that game, but we got the win. Yeah, you turn it around for King of the Hill at the end. What was it? Did you have a little pep talk with your team or anything after game number two in order to turn it around? Well, I mean, we just talk. Like, whenever we lose a game, just forget it. You know, next game is what matters most. Um, we knew on Warlock we played really well, a map we knew better than Lockdown. Um, and we stayed disciplined, and we just knew if we played true to our game on a map like Warlock, we're never going to lose. Definitely saw you stick into your strengths in map number one and map number three. You've also been scrimmaging with the agency as preparation for this tournament. Do you feel the benefits now, the fruits of that labor, today with a win? Yeah, because when you play a great team like the agency, even if it's on a game like Halo 2 Vista, um, it keeps your uh, communication and your, just your focus sharp. Because, you know, some guys may just play, like, MLG playoffs on Halo 3 and just lackadaisical. But we were focused, made sure we tried our butts off every time we scrimmed. It looks like it paid off so far. So far. Well, good luck in the rest of the tournament. The next series is going to be Straight Rippin' versus TCM. You're watching the Halo Master Chief Collection Launch Invitational presented by ESL. Stay tuned.